You're listening to the Whip Appeal Show, hosted by Mistress Candy 69 from the BDSM Alive Radio Network. Well, hello, hello, hello in Radio Land. Today is Thursday, June 29, 2023. Uh, you are listening live to the Whip Appeal Show, hosted by Mistress Candy 69 from the BDSM Alive Radio Network. Sorry I was not on last week. Mistress had a very bad upper respiratory infection that I believe that came from me being exposed to high chlorine levels as well as some other, you know, irritants. And I was really going to do the show, but I was so congested that I just couldn't really talk properly. I sounded like um, like I had clothespins pinching my nose, <laughs> and I was coughing and the whole nine yards. It was not COVID, by the way. I was tested for COVID. But um, I do want to thank everybody on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram who has been con- uh, congratulating me on my recent engagement. And yes, I'm a very happy camper. Uh, I'm actually... It's kind of funny. My friends who know me very well, they're like, oh, mistress is a cougar. Yeah, I'm a cougar. I'm engaged to a man that's 20 years younger than myself. So it's kind of interesting. You know, a lot of people um, think of older men with younger women. And people really don't look upon that so much. But when they see a older woman with a younger guy, it's like, you know, people make, you know, faces. They're frowning. They're like, you know, they ask me if I'm his mother. I mean, not for nothing, but you can honestly see that my fiancé and I look nothing alike. So how could I be his mother, first of all? Let me just clear the air of that one. Um, Being a cougar or a MILF, which the definition for MILF is mother, I like to fuck a lot. Um, I guess to maybe some degree I would be considered a MILF, considering that Mistress does, in fact, have uh, two sons. So I guess it's safe to say to some degree that my fiancé could say he has a MILF cougar fiancé. Um, <laughs> it is pretty funny, actually. Uh, not the the relationship, but just the terminology that I've heard him refer to me to some of his younger friends that I'm a MILF or a cougar. Now, uh, my good friend Rita Daniels, who hopefully will be joined, she's on the network, just not doing any shows currently active. Um, she did, in fact, have a major surgery a few months back and is kind of just getting around to doing certain things. But her show is called In the Cougar Zone, and there's a reason for that. She's an older woman who loves younger men. So you know what's kind of funny about myself? I really never considered myself a cougar until I was getting entangled with younger men. Uh, Before my lovely fiancé, I had the wonderful opportunity uh, about two years ago of playing and fucking a 31-year-old. And at the time, I was 46, like, or just turned 46. So now, um, next month is going to be my 48th birthday, okay? So on July 24th, Mistress is in fact turning the big 48. So do I want to reverse the numbers? Not really, because then I would be considered 84. So, But I am going to be 48 years young. And um, I think I look pretty damn good for somebody who's my age. Um, You know, I work in the dental field. I have a lot of patients and patients who have known me my entire life say, Wow, I can't believe how great you look. You look fucking fantastic for somebody who's going to be 48. And I said, Well, thank you very much. They asked me what my secret is. My secret is is to stay healthy and fit, to go to the gym, work out, change your body, and you can be forever young. I mean, there's this older woman named Ernestine Williams, I think her name is, and she's 90 years old, and she is, in fact, a female bodybuilder um, or working out, you know, keeping herself. She don't even look fucking 90 years old. Honestly, I think she looks more like she's like in her 60s. So the key to staying young is being active, being involved in fitness, and amongst other things. So um, so anyway, uh, it's kind of an interesting fact. I always tell people, including submissives. I've had submissives who are quite chunky throughout my 33 years of being a dominatrix. 
and I was able to put them through a vigorous boot camp training to where they were, you know, exercising. I changed their diet, um, making sure they comply with, you know, holding themselves accountable or, you know, holding them accountable for their actions, you know, being a personal trainer. And then, of course, incorporating the dominatrix business into that when I have a submissive who wants to be a cross dresser who kind of is a little heavy and wants to have a more feminine body. Now, you can be fat and be a cross-dresser, but you're not going to be able to showcase your slutty self being, you know, wearing skimpy outfits and having your fat hang out. It's really, you know, even with women, it's quite disturbing. So if you're able to adhere to a strict diet program and exercise program, with a little bit of time, you can actually, you know, turn those goals into reality. Uh, same thing with being a submissive. If you're interested in serving a dame and you're interested in getting in her good graces, you're, of course, going to follow her strict protocols, rules, and guidelines so you can make mistress happy as well as be happy within yourself knowing that you're, doology, you're diligently do, doing your duties as a good submissive, right? So these are all things that I try to, you know, discuss and talk about. Um, so, you know, it's kind of an interesting fact. It makes for some interesting uh, subjects. You know, if you can follow directions, great. There are still some adults still to this day that can't follow directions, rules, or protocols. And, you know, if you're trying to be in the good graces of a mistress, you really, if you want to be a submissive, you have to be truly submissive. You just can't play the part and say, oh, I'm a sub and I'm this and I'm that. But based on your actions, like for instance, when you're with a personal trainer and the personal trainer tells you to do X, Y, Z, and then you go back and see the personal trainer and the personal trainer notices that you've kind of gained weight in specific areas. Obviously, you're not following the strict guidelines of the personal trainer. When you're a submissive, you must also follow the strict rules of a dame or master in order to be, you know, in their good graces. Us, too, are going to hold you accountable for your actions and your behavior. So... Is it so much being a submissive or being someone who's into fitness or whatever it may be? There are rules and regulations set in place and holding yourself accountable for your actions as well as, um, you know, stuff of that nature. So people ask me online, how come, you know, some subs, like I, for instance, I had a, a dear mistress, the dear mistress column. So today we're going to answer some questions for the dear mistress column. Let me start off by reading. This came from a younger mistress who's only been a dame for about a year. And she tells me in the email, she goes, Dear Mistress Candy, I'm so glad you have this column so I can actually ask you some questions and maybe get the answers I'm possibly looking for. So she writes, uh, Mistress Lisa, you know, Trenton, New Jersey. Okay, Mistress Lisa, here you go. To answer your question... Um, the, her question was, how do you get submissives to really comply with you? Well, that's, a, that's an interesting uh, question. What I like to do is I like to have a thorough conversation with them ahead of time. I like to chit-chat with them. I tell them, you know, tell me some things about you. Tell me about your experience. If you've ever been like with a dame in person or online, I like to know about stuff. Then I asked them who they served prior. Now, most of the submissives I find are truly genuine enough to tell you the mistress's name that they had, you know, met with or interacted with. So I, for one, if I know this dame, I will approach the dominant and ask questions about such said submissive. Um, now, for you... If you don't know this dame, you can look her up and try to find her. Or you can kind of get a, a good idea of how somebody is based on the responses they give you. So, for one, someone who is truly submissive, who understands proper grammar, punctuation, and who seems to be a smart individual, would know how to address a dominant perp. Uh, um, uh, perp who would know how to dress a dominant purposely, okay? Meaning they write to you, dear so-and-so, with a comma. 
I myself, hi, how are you? I myself is a, or are a submissive and is looking for some guidance in the lifestyle. Um, how do I acquire such, um, you know, this is based on an, in, an email that I had received from somebody who I could tell was submissive right off the bat by just the way they write and how they talk to me. Now, I've gotten emails from submissives where they say, Dear Mistress Candy, hi, I want to know how to do this. I want to know how to become a good submissive. I want, I need, I so-and-so. That right there is a good indication that this submissive is really not a submissive. I mean, they are, but they aren't. They may be in a position in their their regular life to really not understand or... Um, you know, they, they may be uh, like a doctor or a lawyer that has a high job, a high, you know, prestige job to where they're always delegating orders and things to other people. So most of them come to us for a sense of release. They want to feel not in control. They want somebody else to take control over them because it kind of gives a good balance to who they are in their regular everyday lives. So... When you get someone like that, those are the people that are really, truly submissive because they really would just want to come to you for a sense of psychological release or sexual release or whatever release it may be. But they're coming to you because they want to feel they're not in control. They want somebody else to take control over them. Those are kind of good submissives because they're kind of relinquishing the control over to the dominant and they are, in fact, submitting okay then you get these people who are fetishists who are only in the lifestyle for themselves their own personal gain and when they write an email it's i or me 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 and these are the types that you kind of like well i could do a pro dom session with this person and make some money and call it a day or I could do a pro-dom session with this per person and teach them the proper way. So this way, down the road, if they ever want to play again, they address me properly and understand that I have rules. Uh, and it's not all about them. It's about what the dominant wants and what makes her or him happy. And the submissive just kind of relinquishes control over to the dominant and kind of abides by the specific rules and protocols and standards that one has and put in place for them. So, dear Mistress Lisa, I hope I answered your question. That was the first one. The second one, which was fucking absolutely hilarious. Now, mind you, this is a good subject. I love to talk about the proctophilia fart fetish. I have lots of clients emailing me about how much I charge for a session. Um, you know, I had one fella even offer to pay for a meal for me for specific gassy foods. So he knows when I do the pro dom session with him, he knows I will be all gassed, gassed and loaded up for his, you know, time. So um, now, fart fetish, right, comes in many shapes, forms, and whatever. There are people that like to be farted on. There are people that just like to listen to the sound of a woman farting. And there are people who listen to the sounds and jerk off to the sounds. So, and the smell. This is a key factor for a lot of them. A lot of people think this is absolutely disgusting, but believe it or not, people do have intense eproctophilia fart fetishes to where they get off and the smell, the sound, and the image of the dominant who is farting in their face. So when I was doing... Uh, eproctophilia fart fetish sessions in the past I would wear a cat suit with no panties and I would literally just crouch over the submissive who was blindfolded and restrained and I would literally just plop my ass over the bridge of their nose and literally just fart as long as I could and as hard as I could and as loud as I could in these guys faces so you know here we go some people ask me, why do people have fart fetishes? I don't know. It's what they like. It's what gets them off. Um, why do people have latex and shoe fetishes? 
why do people have fetishes about hair, nails, and clothing? Um, you know, fetishes come in a variety of different things, and people will do whatever they can to get themselves off. Now, for instance, I have this fella who has been a submissive of mine online for the past, I don't know, 15 years, and he has a fart fetish. He loves to call me up on my phone sex sites and listen to me fart. Now, most of the time, I'm not really farting. I have uh, either a um, good, you know, hand and mouth technique to where I can rip some farts right from my precious lips, or I can rip some farts on my body by blowing some air on myself, or got one even better for you. I got a hold of a fart machine like that you can buy at Spencer's that actually a couple of years back myself and another doctor played a April Fool's joke on someone in our office with the same machine. We taped it under the doctor's chair. So while he was drilling on a patient, me and this other doctor took the remote control and were kind of controlling it from afar. And some of the farce on this fucking thing sounded absolutely fucking real. So while he's drilling in this lady's mouth, we're like, you know, playing this fart tone like, or, or whatever the hell it was, or like loud ones. Of course, I had to give that extra just for the, you know, the, the sake of the conversation. And um, so the patient is looking at the fella, the doctor at the time, and you know, not really saying anything, but kind of laughing because I was assisting the doctor when the shit was occurring. So it was really fucking funny. I tried so hard, but I, I started laughing during like the first 20 minutes of it. And then the doctor looked at me and goes, you know, Johanna, oh, excuse me. He goes, you know, mistress, that's really disgusting that you did that. And I said, well, I'm sorry, I'm, I, I had bad beans last night. So, of course, I said it in front of the patient, but it wasn't really so much that. So, a few other patients go by, and I continue, and the other doctor continues to do it. And then finally, one, one brief hot moment at the end of this appointment, the patient, this old man was in the chair, and he said to the doctor, he goes, somebody in this office has bad gas all I hear is flatulent noises the whole time while I'm getting drilled at my appointment. So I started laughing, and when the doctor left the room, I told the patient, I said, listen, we're trying to play an April Fool's joke on Dr. So-and-so, and we purposely put a fart machine under the chair, and the patient thought it was absolutely hilarious. Now, in a pro-dom session, you can't use a fart machine because they could see it. So what you kind of maybe have to do is if you're laying a patient or a, 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 or a client down and you're going to have them on a massage table, you might want to be able to put the fart machine under the massage table. And as you're sitting over the fella's face while they're blindfolded, you can absolutely, you know, have a remote control or you can have it set to us on a timer to where it just keeps farting over and over again. Or then here's another better option. You get a whole bunch of, of gassy foods. Like for me, it's broccoli, cabbage, hard-boiled eggs, tacos, Mexican-type stuff that would really get me to start farting and give me a stomach ache that would cause me to have this supreme number of flatulence, or farts as one would say, and continue to be farting on the submissive. Um, I, for one, purposely love to have the submissive lay down while I blow obnoxious fumes of gas in their face. And I always tell them, welcome to Mistress Candy's gas chamber. Okay? So, like, believe it or not, a lot of people have this type of fetish. And, and you're not the only one. So, for instance, last weekend, my fiancé was here, and he was laying underneath me on my bed, and I had the worst stomach ache on the face of the earth, and I just couldn't help it. So, I literally, like, for those of you who are listening to the show tonight, who are probably going to sit there and start jerking off as I'm talking about this story, my fiancé, I didn't even tell him. I just kind of 
blew ass on him, so to speak. And I got to tell you, this was probably the loudest fart I have ever laid in front of this poor guy. And let me tell you, it was so loud. And the fact that it had such force behind it, like he literally felt my ass cheeks ripple as I let out this hot air from my twitchy anus. And he looked at me and goes, holy shit. I think that was the loudest fart. And the the I felt it on my lap. So he was laughing hysterically. And I said to him, I said, you know, guys pay me to do this. And he goes, I know. He goes, and here I am getting all these free farts from you. So it was absolutely fucking hilarious. So, sweetheart, if you're listening to the show, just know that there are people who do get off on this. And and this is why I'm sharing this funny story. And, of course, I have a multitude of other friends who are actually into 13-year-old boy toilet humor, as I call it. And I thought I was the only one who was into this kind of stuff. And to me, I find farts absolutely fucking hilarious. There are people walking this earth that take dicks up their ass that think farting is disgusting. But in reality, it's a natural bodily function. And and here's a food for thought. If you're comfortable in front of your significant other, fiance, husband, wife, whatever your dynamic is, and if you can fart in front of them and they laugh at it, then they're a keeper. If you fart in front of someone who you've been with for a while and they think it's absolutely fucking disgusting, get rid of them and find somebody who will cherish you and all of your farts, okay? So the moral of the story here is is that if you can't be yourself in front of somebody, why would you be with that person, okay? So again, there are some submissives who find farts absolutely disgusting and atrocious. And then there are other ones who find it hot, steamy, and delicious and would pay any amount of money for you to fart in their face. So I, of course, have this wonderful thing where I love to walk up to submissives at a convention, grab them by the back of their head and place their head in the crack of my ass and I just fart away like there's no tomorrow. (laughs) And you know what they always tell me? Thank you, mistress. That was very nice. Thank you, mistress. That's their response. Now, my fiance, on the other hand, thought it was absolutely fucking hilarious and just (laughs) laughed his balls off. And to me, that is somebody I can spend the rest of my life with. Somebody who accepts me and all my imperfections and the farts that I lay on top of them. How, how hot and steamy and how rippled they may be. They truly enjoy it. So there you go. So look at that. Mistress now farts on top of her fiance and he just, <laughs> he just takes it and loves every minute of it. Now, a funny story. Uh, last weekend, him and I were at his house, and I was laying in the bed, and we are watching TV. I think he was playing, like, a video game. He, he plays, like, Resident Evil and stuff. So he's playing Resident Evil, and he's getting the shit beat out of him on this thing. So I had initially farted very loudly in his room, and he looked at me and started laughing. <laughs> and the best is when you kind of, like, non-nonchalantly stretch, and a fart just kind of sneaks out. Those are the best kind. And then he looks over at me and goes, wow, that was a stinky one. And I started laughing. Of course, I'm laughing as I'm telling the story. So then the best was like 20 minutes later, he's sitting in his gaming chair and I hear him fart and I don't smell it at first, but oh my God, it smelled like a dead body. So I have to say, I have heard him fart on numerous occasions and never smelled one until last week. And oh my fucking God, it stunk so bad. It actually smelled like a dead rotting corpse. I looked over at him and said, holy shit, dude. And he goes, you think you can fart? I can fart just as bad as you. That's what he said to me. So I started laughing and of course made my eyes tear in the whole nine yards. And I said to him, I said, you know, 
if you ever want to make money, you can definitely, I could use you during a pro dom session to where I could have you fart in somebody's face. And he just looked at me and started laughing. But it's the truth of the matter. Submissives enjoy being farted on. Husbands to be enjoy being farted on. So I don't know. Is it is it that my my future husband has a little bit of submissiveness to him? I would say he does, but I don't dominate him like tell him what to do or you know that type of stuff. Unless he wants me to tell him what to do. I mean, I've I've done like role reversal with him where I've played the submissive and he tr- he dominated me. Although his domination was kind of soft, but I still let him do it because you know what? It's fun for us to kind of role play and play with certain different things and kind of spicing up our relationship or you know think make things a little kinky. Um, and you know, some people in general think farts are kinky. They pretty much are. And and for instance, when him and I were first dating. Um, you know, I would be like having the the time of my life and, you know, some women, when they go to like come, they get like really tight and they like kind of tense up and sometimes farts creep out. So (laughs) the first few times him and I had sex, I had farted during an orgasm and he like, was laughing really hard and actually for the first few times we had sex after that we I would start laughing during sex and so would he because we would initially think about the time when I had kind of let go and farted during sex so that was the first few times then after that I didn't do it for a couple of months and then I realized that uh hmm There was some kinkiness missing from our sexual activity, so I decided to kind of add in a little bit of, you know, farting to the mix to make him laugh about it, and it was pretty funny. So now, it goes to show that I'm so comfortable around this man that I could literally just fart in in his pure sight. So when he was here yesterday, of course we had sex like we always do, and we have a wonderful sex life, by the way. And when we were done, I got up and, like, stood in the room, my room here, naked. And, of course, let the hugest fart rip out of my ass. And he just (laughs) looked at me and started laughing. (laughs) And it makes me laugh, too, because, honestly, like... This is something him and I, like, do for fun here and there. And, you know, like I said, it's a normal bodily function. And, of course, you know, he would tell me in the beginning, you know, my mom says it's inappropriate to fart in front of women. And I said, listen, it's a natural bodily function, and I really don't give a fuck if you fought it in front of me or not because it is what it is. So I told him belting and farting is appropriate. I, for one, burp and fart all the fucking time. So honestly, I have to say I've met my serious match here. This is why we're getting married, because him and I have so much in common, more so than anyone I have ever been with in my entire life, including my ex-husband who I was married to. So, I mean, you know, here I am thinking the last guy I was with was a perfect match. Nah, he wasn't. He was just a fucking... A cold fart at, at, at that at, at best. So, my fiance and I have a lot in common. We're into the same things. Him and I are kind of like the same people. The only difference is there's just a 20 year gap in, in between us. But that is age to me is just a number. I, for one, enjoy being a cougar. I, for one, enjoy being that I'm going to be, you know, his wife in the f- near future. And we have a great relationship and farts included farts and burps included. And, you know, I for one also have a foot fetish. So he, you know, knows about foot fetishes. And of course me being with him, I was tickling his feet in the beginning and he was extremely ticklish. Now there is such a thing as tickle torture. And a lot of submissives online ask me about foot fetish, tickle torture And I usually tell them, I said, listen, my fiancé wasn't, I guess he was into it, but he wasn't, but he kind of was. His feet were ticklish, so I've been manhandling his feet every so often to get him used to having his feet touched. 
Now, of course, I suck on his toes, I lick his toes, I bite his toes, and now I'm tickling his feet on top of it. So, of course, these are all sorts of kinky types of play that you can incorporate into your relationship to make your relationship more spicy. So, (laughs) I like to tickle him, lick his feet, suck his feet, um... I'll even, like, take my feet and, like, play with his cock and balls because that's a form of uh, cock and ball torture but incorporating foot fetish into the mix. So, um, you know, then, of course, here's the thing. I love to dish out cock and ball torture. Now, as a young fella himself, he never really experienced anything like this before. So here is Mistress you know, riding him and smacking his cock and balls from behind. Why? Little such, you know, triggers of inflicted fun pain, as I like to call it, or funishment, um, can have impact on a lot of people. When you do it in a sexual manner, it's kind of, you know, uh, building up and building up and building up. And then, of course, the guy is waiting to have his big orgasm and he comes, right? So, with that being said, with my fiancé, I like to kind of smack his cock and balls around here and there to kind of give him a little bit of uh, CBT. And actually, he kind of likes it now. He actually likes it very much. So I like to squeeze his cock and balls like I'm kind of squeezing a piece of fruit to see if it's ripe. You know what I mean? Like that sort of, you know, intense pleasure you can get. Like I'm sure, you know, guys and women, all of us alike, have been in the grocery store and we're squeezing plums and nectarines to see and avocados to see if they're ripe. Now, if uh, you squeeze an avocado and it's kind of mushy, You kind of don't want to buy that one unless you're going to use it right away because it's pretty fucking ripe. Um, I like to squeeze them for firmness and tenderness to see if they're semi-ripe or they're like still kind of green. So when I'm squeezing cock and balls, I like to kind of think back to I'm in the grocery store squeezing some avocados and (laughs) and applying some light pressure and... um, squeezing for the most part of testing for tenderness and ripeness. Now, when you're you're squeezing my fiancé's cock and balls, of course, I'm not squeezing him for ripeness, but I'm squeezing him with a gentle amount of pressure so he kind of likes it. So now, recent, I've been using a uh, wand vibrator on his cock and balls to kind of give him a little different type of sensation. And, of course, that's kind of the sensory deprivation type of stuff where I'm kind of teasing him, but not really deprivation because deprivation is a little different, but almost like um, uh, a sensory type play where, you know, you can kind of get somebody sexually turned on by not really sucking their dick, but, you know, squeezing their cock and balls and the shaft and kind of, you know, giving like a heavy hand job movement, like jerking the shaft and like, you know, squeezing up into the frenulum. So my guy is not circumcised. So he, of course, has the um, the foreskin on. And the last young fellow that I with was with wasn't circumcised either. So I'm finding out that a lot of young guys now are not circumcised, okay? So, and that's cool. But these guys have all the pleasure in their hands, basically, because they have a foreskin. So when you're jerking your cock, basically, you're pulling back, and the foreskin is very sensitive. So why people get circumcised, one, is for hygienic reasons to be clean. Now, you can be uncircumcised circumcise and and just keep your dick clean when you take a piss you got to pull the skin back wash it dry it pull the skin back over it and then put it in your pants and call it a day people who are who are already circumcised they lose a lot of pleasure when they're having sex because it takes them longer to come because they don't have the foreskin protecting like the glands so you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, when, you, when you're when you not circumcised, you come faster. Yes and no. 
It depends on how excited you are, first of all, and how turned on you are. So I don't know if that's really a thing to be circumcised versus uncircumcised. And, you know, I think, I mean, look, to me, all dicks are the same. But I find, personally, uh, dicks or cocks who are not circumcised, I find that I derive the most pleasure from them because you're getting the whole dick and nothing but the dick. And guys who are not circumcised, you're getting half a dick, if you ask me. So I, if I had to say, I think I would prefer my men not circumcised at this point, okay? Um, a lot of old school people especially um, Jewish people, like to circumcise their children. Um, but then again, there are some that are not circumcised. And I don't know, are you feeling left out because you're not having full orgasm because your hood was removed? I don't know. I mean, I've been with en enough guys in my life to tell me that I wonder what it would feel like if I had a foreskin. Then I have, you know, people that are not circumcised, like my future husband, and he goes, I don't know, I've always felt pleasure, no matter, you know, I wouldn't know, because I'm not, I'm not circumcised, so it's kind of interesting, so I'm going to do a poll out here, how many of you guys listening to the show are not circumcised, and how many are of you out there who are, do you think that your sexual um, gratification comes more from not being circumcised? Do you think that you feel more pleasure as opposed to somebody who is circumcised? So that, that's, a, that's a question I have for you listeners out there today. So if you're listening to the show tonight and you want to give me your input, you can uh, inbox me on Twitter or tweet to me at Mistress C69 or at BDSM Alive Radio Network. Your answer, if you feel that you've been gypped in the sexual department because you're not circumcised or you are. Kind of an interesting question, right? So, oh, Mistress right now has a twitch in her eyeball and my eye is like twitching and it's driving me crazy. So thank God I'm not on like a video right now because you would see my eye like twitching like a, like a sieve. <laughs> it would not be a pretty sight. Um, so I don't know why my eye twitches involuntarily like this. It's not the eye that I had surgery on, so it kind of makes me wonder, like, you know, what it is. But anyway, I guess it doesn't really matter. Maybe it's I, maybe I have a tick of some sort, and a tick is my eye twitching. Um, so on the bright side, Exotica is coming up in Edison, New Jersey, in November 3rd to the 5th this year, I believe. So get your tickets now. Go to www.exotica, E-X-X-X, triple X, O-T-I-C-A, expo.com exoticaexpo.com ladies are always free on Fridays you're welcome to go if you're transgendered but I don't know if you could really get a lady pass I think you'd have to um, show some ID if you are actually a transgender or not um, to get in free on Friday I'm not sure how that works I know they did it like last year but you can't quote me on it um I do know that I pretty soon, I think their Miami one is coming up or Colorado. I'm not 100% sure. I don't go to all of them. I usually just go to the one that's in Edison. That's the biggest one for me. And that's actually at 96 Sunfield Avenue at the um, Exotica Expo Convention Center on Sunfield Avenue. And the hotels close by are the Hilton and... Um, the Raritan, that's the Raritan, Raritan Convention Center in Raritan, New Jersey. So I should be at that show this year, although I'm not sure at the moment. I'm pretty sure I'm going, but I'm not 100% sure. So, um, so you can find me and my friends at the convention center on those dates. And of course, I want to thank Spunk Lube for continually being the support for our network and my show, of course. And my bottle is about, mm, let's see, I opened the bottle April 1st, if I'm not mistaken. And let's see how much I got in it now. I'm about still three quarters of the way down um, of a 32 ounce fluid ounce bottle. If you are interested in obtaining some spunk lube and you're local to me, I will be happy to drop a couple of samples in the mail for you. Um, if you're not local to me, then 
you can go to spunklube.com and you can tell them that you heard about their product from my show and they'll be glad to send you some samples as well as um, they do have small bottles for purchase and I will say it's the best lubricant I have ever used in my life better than KY jelly and they have all these different formulas they have um, silicone hybrid um, they have two colored ones a pink one and I think an orange one and they also have a natural based one which is completely edible by the way so let's say you want to you know suck your boyfriend's dick after he fucks you in your pussy it's completely edible so that would be the one to use it's a spunk lube natural it's made with coconut avocado and flaxseed oil as well as I think sunflower oil and maybe olive oil so that's a good one to use and um but I like the one that's the official spunk lube, which looks like cum. The the uh, the um, product is thick and creamy and looks just like semen. And boy, is it so slippery that when you when I use it, I have a really good time using it. Keeps me very hydrated and very lubricated, and it's good. You don't definitely want a dry pussy while you're trying to have sex. <laughs> so or a dry cock with. Uh, a dry, uncircumcised penis, you want to make sure that that head is very lubricated so you're not ripping your foreskin. So <laughs> that's on that note. Uh, but I want to thank everybody for con- your continued support of listening to my show and downloading the shows. And if, you know, again, I still do the Dear Mistress column. Keep the emails coming. I only picked a couple of them today to kind of discuss it's a lot to cover, and, and some of the subjects I like to keep for different shows. So if you are emailing me about a current topic, um, <clears throat> please tell me that, you know, if you'd like me to discuss it on a show where you call in or you just want to be anonymous or you can, you know, put a falsetto name, that's cool too. Um, I enjoy answering the emails. I hope that, you know, I'm of, of some help. I do get some correspondence after I do the show and the people say, oh, thank you for answering my question. Your show is very informative. I learned a lot from you and thank you very much. So, you know, this is what I'm here. I'm here to help people in the lifestyle, people who are just getting into the lifestyle. I'm here for guidance of submissives, what you should and shouldn't be doing when approaching a dominant Rules and protocols, different types of fetishes, different types of paraphilias, um, different types of, uh, you know, para meaning multiple, fe- and philia is a fetish, multiple fetishes. Um, I like to discuss, you know, rules and protocols, different types of collars, uh, even everyday mundane stuff about my life and my, me being a cougar myself. And, um, you know, I just hope you enjoy listening to the show. Happy 4th of July, everybody, that is coming up this coming weekend. Please be safe. Don't blow your fingers and faces off. Stay far away when you're lighting fireworks. Enjoy your company. Have a wonderful time. And, of course, I would like to, on air, wish my very personal good friend, Steve Zing, the basis of Danzig, and he's also in Black 29, and morning noise. I would like to wish you a happy, happy birthday, Steve. Today I saw you at 58 years old and you look fantastic. So happy, happy birthday to you. And um, I'm going to call the show for the right now. And uh, so thanks for listening. And I will be live next Thursday, same bat time, same bat channel. And I hope you enjoy listening to the rest of the show. And thank you to Blitz Kid for allowing me to use your song, She Dominates, as my opener for my show. And thank you to Spunk Lube. Have a great, great day and evening. And thank you all for listening to my show. And have a good night. Thank you and bye-bye.
You're listening to the Whip Appeal Show, hosted by Mistress Candy 69 from the BDSM Alive Radio Network. <laughs> 